Hi guys, how are you? I hope you're good. Today I have a short and sweet video for you probably, hopefully. Um, and it's all about how I make my thumbnails. My thumbnails have changed style um, a couple of times now. I always find it fun to sort of mix it up and make a new type of design or um, theme but I always basically use the same tools and I want to show you guys what I do I know this is not gonna be applicable for everyone but even if you don't need to make a thumbnail in your life uh, maybe this is gonna be just a fun nosy thing to watch so the things that I use are always Lightroom and Photoshop all from Adobe Premiere I know there's a lot of other ways and a lot of other platforms I know there's like PicMonkey I think it's called where you can do the thumbnails and I did used to use that for a, blo uh, a blog before I always had those programs uh, in my computer so I always just use them and just before i get in uh, very quickly i'm gonna mention today's sponsor and i'm so happy to be working with skillshare again skillshare is an online learning platform with over 25,000 classes in various things such as design writing and also photoshop and picture editing <laughs> there's this particular class that is all about the thumbnails it's actually called kind of clickbaity it says how to create youtube thumbnails proven to grow your engagement so i'm excited to delve into that and see if it does work i do definitely enjoy their classes because they're so short you can definitely fit them in um in your day this one has seven parts and none of them are over six minutes long <laughs> But if you also want to start working with Photoshop or any other program, honestly, uh, there's always classes for beginners. I think Skillshare is a very f friendly learning platform for people who are just starting up as well in any area. The content that goes on Skillshare is already filtered through quality control and that is a massive plus for me. Skillshare is also affordable if you buy an annual plan, it's under $10 per month. But if you want to check it out and you don't want to commit yet, I have a perfect solution for you. I have a link down below in the description bar. And if you want to click that, you'll get two months premium access, which means access to every class for free. And you can just check it out. And even if you don't decide to stick around, you can learn a lot in two months. So as I said, link down below. Thank you again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. And with that said, I think we're just gonna go over to my voiceover for when I show you what I do. It's not that long of a process. It's a bit gimmicky at times. I'm currently really enjoying what I'm doing with my thumbnails. Um, I know it's not for everyone in states, but you know, I hope you enjoy the process and yeah, let's go. Hello, voiceover me. So the thing that I do at the very beginning is I start with a photo that I took just with my camera before filming or after filming, depends. And then on the left side there, you can see user presets. These are all of the presets that I've made for my Instagram stories, not stories, sorry, photos and then my thumbnails. Um, as you can see, it looks terrifying when I use some of the filters that are not meant for thumbnails, but you see YouTube 1 and YouTube 2 at the bottom. And so basically in Lightroom, you can edit a photo and then if you like what it, how it looks like or just a general tidiness of it, you can save it as your own preset so you don't have to go and turn all of these levers that you see me uh, showing you now every single time for a new photo you simply apply the same layer and then adjust it individually if the light was obviously different on that day so this is how i do the very minimum editing of the photo just to make it a bit uh, brighter and a bit more fun to look at i suppose um, i take the yellow tones a little bit down um, same with the orange other than that I put a tiny tint for uh, the shadows, you'll see there down below. And in general, I just put the exposure a little bit up and some bits with the light, just depending on where I take the photo as well. Other than that, that's pretty much it for this stage. And you can see if I reset it to the original one and then put it back on, that's the difference between these two. So then I save this photo and I go on to Photoshop. <laughs> So I right click the photo I want to edit and go on Photoshop and from there I will right click on the layer and I will select duplicate because you can't really do much on the original one if you want that in the background like I do. So at this point I will get my lasso tool. I know there are very many ways of selecting a subject and there's more precise ways but this is just the one 
I use and prefer. I find it the most time efficient and precise in combination for what you get at the end. Um, and I then dot it all the way around what I want to be cropped. Once I'm somewhat satisfied with the selection, I will find the beginning point and connect this to make a selection. Then I'll go select modify smooth, just to smoothen out the edges just a tiny bit. I usually use a uh, five and then inverse it because we want to delete the background on this duplicate layer. So I just call, uh, select um, delete on my keyboard and then you'll see that we have deleted the background of this particular photo. Uh, but we do have the background on the original layer. So we will be working with the original one from now on. For this, I will go here and select gradient. Now I will swap between the styles here quite a bit depending on my mood really and I'm just going for this one this time and then I just work with the angle just to see what I would prefer um, then when I think it's nice I'll just click OK. Once I've selected my starting point, I will then change the gradient layer into color. So what that means is that the color is sort of applied to the background. Then I also go into hue and saturation panel. I uh, will click a little button. What I can do on this panel is mess about a little bit with the saturation because sometimes the colors are a bit too vivid. Um, and if I slide the top bar, the colors will actually change the hue. So this is how I can change what the colors are um, to make it a bit more exciting from using just the same gradient as always. So I mess about with this a little bit until I'm kind of decided on the colors and then I'll go back on the angle and work with that. And once that is done, I will then move this whole shebang into my main thumbnail preset that, well, a file that I made for myself so I don't have to repeat it every time, which I'll show you in a second. Once I have this selection, I will select all the layers and click duplicate layer, but instead of just clicking OK there, I will actually find the already open the thumbnail PSD file and send all of these files all duplicates of these files into that tab. So once I open that tab, it will actually be a bit of a different size because that one was a normal size and this is a YouTube thumbnail size, which I'll show you later on as well what that is. Um, this is where my computer is acting up a little bit, but you can see me trying to resize all of it to fit. You can see <laughs> some details from the previous thumbnails there, um, which we'll take care of in a second as well. So once I sized it to fit the YouTube thumbnail size, I will select OK. Then I will find um, my background files and my front files here from the ones that I duplicated. So I will select the background ones, which are the gradient, the not cropped picture and the hue saturation edits and I will select them and I will drag them all the way to be underneath the square that I use. Um, there you go. Now there's a bunch of stuff on this, but I'll just disable the files from the previous thumbnails. But if you've noticed, I had this shape behind me in most of my thumbnails if it's not a vlog, and that is how I do it. So the background is sort of matching between the thumbnails. Now I will also drag this front file where my usual front files are just so the text is uh, not behind me. Now usually because it zooms in a little bit because of the size of the YouTube thumbnail I won't have much space for text which is entirely my fault and I constantly do it but I like the bokeh effect and if you zoom out too far then you won't have it yada 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 but usually I put in the 
month of the box in a thumbnail, but you'll see that I decided to go without it this time because it just didn't really fit anywhere without having me blocking a lot of things. Um, so I'll play about with it a little bit and then decide not to use it at the end. <laughs> Another couple of elements that I have on these photos um, are some of the glowy magic-y effects and the corners that I just made with some brush tools here. Um, I don't always include them, but kind of like it. And sometimes I'll use the brush with a shadow to go under the text to make sure that it's readable. Um, other than that, the only other thing is this layer of bokeh glitter. Um, I deleted parts of it so that it's not all over my body most of the times, uh, but it just adds a little bit of this shiny vibe. I understand that <laughs> it's a lot going on in my thumbnails and my too much gene definitely comes in here, but I, I don't know, I like it, so I'm gonna keep it for at least for a little while until I get bored with it. So when I'm happy with that, I will save it as a JPEG, save it in my thumbnail folder and upload it when I'm uploading my video. Obviously you can find this very easily when you just have a quick Google, but in case you're wondering, the thumbnail size for YouTube is this. Um, if you wanted to input it somewhere. And you were lazy. <laughs> there you go. This is a quick before and after photo, uh, although the before is after Lightroom. But I hope you guys enjoyed this little video of me showing how I make my thumbnails. I don't know if you did, but let me know if you did. If you make thumbnails yourself, let me know what programs you use. And thanks so much for watching, guys. Stay awesome, stay kind, and I'll see you soon. Bye!